Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of my Amiga 2000 restoration project. If you like my video, please hit that subscribe button anytime. Since the last video, I've also made a few new changes to the computer, including installing a Megachip 2000 2 meg chip RAM adapter, which increases the chip RAM from 1 meg to 2 meg. With a bit of brute force and a bit of patience, I was able to remove the old Agnes socket from the motherboard and rebuild a new socket to make the Megachip 2000 board removable and rather than hardwiring it to the motherboard just in case I need to get it out for whatever reason. While I was at it I also installed a kickstart switch to be able to switch between kickstart and the diagram to be able to diagnose any problems with the installation. As you can see everything's working fine and the computer displays now 2 megabytes of chip RAM. The second part of the update was to install a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a Pi Storm 2K as a CPU replacement. I then 3D printed a custom 5.25 inch bracket to house a HDMI switch inside the computer to be able to toggle between the RGB and RTG outputs for the Pi and the RGB to HDMI adapter to a single monitor. The panel also allows me to switch between the kickstart and diagnostic ROMs uh, the menu for the RGB to HDMI adapter in case I need to change any settings and also a front mounted switch for the power supply rather than reaching around the back. You can also see that the panel has a slot for the SD card for easy access rather than opening up the computer to insert the SD card directly into the Pi. I then 3D printed a couple of custom brackets to easily access the HDMI output from the switch and the Pi's Ethernet and USB ports. Using a couple of different SD cards, now I can easily switch between the Musashi version of the Pi Storm or the updated Caffeine OS, depending on what I intend on playing. Using Amiga Explorer, I'm able to easily transfer files across from the PC to the Amiga via the flip box by simply copying and pasting the file across. The speed is quite reasonable and as you can see it only takes a few seconds to copy your file over. Once the file's been transferred over, then it's just a matter of opening up directory opus, going to the RAM disk and extracting the file. Then it's just a matter of copying the extracted files back to the SD card and as you can see the process is quite fast as the write speeds of the SD card are very quick. So for this example we'll go over to the stuff folder open up games, WHD load, folder called adventure and open up our Maniac Mansion folder that we just created and load the game. On the front of the computer I now press the RTG to RGB switch to switch over this way to the RGB HDMI controller and in just a moment the game will appear. I do hope you enjoyed part 2 of my Amiga restoration project so please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I hope to see you again for my next exciting video. If you have any questions or comments please don't hesitate to leave those below.